This is Mr. Ben Merkinoff. Yeah, that's right. One of the original kite surfers in Australia. I actually had a look at some um, photos from 1997. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, on a Mac-T, 8-foot Mac-T surfboard. Oh, really? Yeah. And you... water, water skis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, water skis in Lake Macquarie. All right, cool. <laughs> so he's gone from kite surfing to uh, powered flight. Yeah, more, more air sports, I'm afraid. This <laughs> one's uh, a new addition to the family. Yeah. <laughs> It's a uh, Boeing Stearman A75L300. It's a 1942 model, which oh, uh, about 280 were built mm -hmm. that year for the US Navy. It's got a uh, nine-cylinder, 11.2-litre radial engine. Produces about 300 horsepower. Mm -hmm. And a uh, constant speed propeller, which means the blades go like this to keep the RPM the same, mm -hmm. as opposed to my other biplane, which we'll show you in a little while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so how, long, how long have you had this plane? We spent probably the last three years restoring it. Uh, father passed away, unfortunately, about a year and a half, two years ago, and uh, went into storage for a little while. And then I finished it, and we picked it up in April this year mm -hmm. and flew it from Perth to here. So that was uh, an interesting flight. Mm. 31 flying hours and about two and a half weeks due to weather and all sorts of bits and pieces. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Mm. We cruise at about 97 knots, well, about. We cruise at 97 knots mm. at um, 5,000 feet, using about 65%. We want to run it a bit harder, but due to the fuel consumption of a litre a minute, we had to go back on power to make the next fuel bowser. <laughs> 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 but uh, it'll do 100 knots in the circuit, which uh, means we can outrun a 152, um, something smaller than this. That people learn on today. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of fun. Bloody huge plane though, and it weighs about as much empty as the other plane does full. The other plane? Let's have a look yeah. at the other plane. Yeah, this is the. Uh, it's not called Might. <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway through taking off a sticker. <laughs> this is a DH 82A Tiger Moth. Uh -huh. um, the serial's A17136, which is. Uh, 1941 model mm -hmm. and built by the uh, Royal Australian Air Force for the purpose of training our boys to go into World War II. So how old is this plane? 41. 41? Yeah. Jeez. So uh, what's that? 70 yeah. this year. Yeah. Which is uh, quite amazing. But yeah, they'd spent a number of years at Point Cook, the oldest um, uh, RAF flying school in Australia. And yeah, taught many of our boys. So it's quite, quite, got quite a bit of history. It's, I think it's at last count the fourth oldest flying in Australia. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the RAF did well. They only bingled it, I think, twice before okay. it went over to um, Perth and ended up with a, a crop dusting group over there with working for West Farmers. Okay. And um, being in Perth, it's nice and windy, so they wrecked it a few times before ditching it in a, in a shed along with about 30 other Tiger Moths. Oh. At which stage, uh, an old guy who used to restore antique motorbikes came along and said, hmm, I'll take the lot. Oh. So he moved all of them over to Luscan Tyre, which is about 12 miles north of Cessna, mm. and um, started restoring them. This is about the 22nd or 23rd one that he restored. OK, so they're quite rare. They are, yeah. Uh, Rare is, yeah, they are, especially the Aussie ones. Um, there's 160-something on the register at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, not all flying, of mm. course. But um, there's only 18 of the other on the register at the moment, mm -hmm. and only three of those have that engine-propeller combination. Oh, cool. Yeah. But, yeah, love it. <laughs> so which is your, your favourite? I mean, it's hard to choose between uh, two planes. <laughs> it's like you, really, a, you really can't choose. It's yet. like your child. Which is my favourite child? Well, I love them both. <laughs> Well, that child hasn't been with me long enough for me okay. to get to know him well yeah. enough yet. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm still in the learning phase there, uh -huh. um, which means I still get a few scared moments here and there. But look, I've flown this for more than 100 hours and it's like putting on a glove. Okay. Whereas yeah, the other one, I'm only, I think I've done five hours in it, oh, nice, apart nice. from the trip over. Yeah, it, yeah. But five hours of landings and takeoffs, yeah, straight and level's easy. So your, your heart sort of palpitates when you get into the plane a little bit still. Yeah, you get a zone happening. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah you pick and choose your conditions, unfortunately. <laughs> it's a bit windy today with the crosswind. But, yeah, yeah. Um, if it was a little less crosswind, we'd take the Tiger out and <laughs> go and hover it somewhere. Yeah, hover it. <laughs> have a quick look at the engine. You just, I don't Absolutely. Know. How good is this? It's a 6.125 litre four-cylinder. 
Six point two. Six point. Yeah, six and a quarter. So it sounds yeah. huge. Yeah. I love the exhaust system. I'm sure it'd be quite loud. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out. In fact, when I went to Manila earlier at Easter this year, um, I took a mate for a fly up there with no headsets and nothing. Yeah. Because you know it was just around the local farm. <laughs> And we both came back and couldn't hear for yeah. about two hours. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, it's a carby, straight through, it's a flame trap, it's got a, a uh, filter on that side, so when when it's full throttle, flame trap opens, okay. and you get sort of like a ram air force Ah, there. okay, so it's like a turbo in a sense. Yeah, More sort of, and then as soon as you've got any carby ice or problems like that, you'll uh, throttle back, the flame trap closes and it draws air through the oh, okay. filter through there. Mm. Magneto, one on each side for the eight spark plugs. There's sparkies on the other side as well. So you've got two spark plugs per cylinder? That's right, yeah. Okay. I mean, with a cylinder that big, I guess you'd need them, mate. Yeah, you get a nice clean burn. It'll <laughs> still still fire and run on, on one it's Magneto, on, yeah. but, but... I guess when your revs go up, it'd be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a better spark. Yeah, yeah. I'll through the back. This one here's probably the only addition to... Uh, the original. The original, has, apart from radios, and that's a, um, a fuel pump. It's for an auxiliary tank in there that holds about, um, shit, um, <laughs> good question, 45 litres. So what's the range in this, like, in a full tank? Both safe full tank. is about four hours. Four hours, that's all Four right. hours of safe endurance. So you can make a decision in this in four hours? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's all right. But, uh, anything over an hour and a quarter and you get a sore ass. Yeah, well, I imagine. It's pretty <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, you, know, I look at, you generally go early in the morning mm. and... You know, you're, you're rugged up like a Michelin man. Mm. So, be freezing. You, you shoehorn yourself in and try and strap yourself down. Mm. I haven't got through to the uh, electric seat warmers and stuff like that from J Cup, oh, from uh, Auto One, but a mate of mine in the next hangar's got a gyrocopter and he's got the heated seat that plugs into the cigarette lighter. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's what you need with these pants. It's bloody cold out there, there. you realise. Oh, when it's summer, it's, it's so cool, though. It's like yeah. t shirt and shorts. Yeah. Jump in, go for a lap yeah. around the. Yeah, like even if you get up there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, especially down the beach. Yeah. And and your other this is your, you still got a kite as you can see. Well yeah, I've got a I've got a slingshot at home and a <laughs> Nash board and a slingshot board and a few bits and pieces, but but um I found that airtime wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I um did a course last year with Paragliding up at Manila, which I keep yeah. mentioning. It's like my second home now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, after nine days of, of a course up there, shit, after about two minutes of of, uh, of bunny slope airtime, like actual airtime, yeah. we went up for a tandem, which is, you know, with another pilot, and, and then the next flight is, is off a 1,200 foot hill. But your skills are pretty good with flying anyway, and kites no. and everything, so it'd be like second nature. It, yeah. Yeah, huh? It, very surprising, actually. Yeah. Like, the ground handling stuff was a Easy. breeze. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that's the hardest part. Yeah. Once most, people, most people get killed on the ground with yeah. these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get thrown over the back of the cliff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, no one ever died impacting the sky, did they? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Height is your friend. <laughs> so your ideal day would be, if you start in the morning, you'd have what? You'd have a fly on, your early morning fly. Well, I did it when I went to Manila. Yeah. Perfect day. I actually had the paraglider in the front seat of the Tiger Moth. Okay. <laughs> I flew from here to Manila. Unpacked it, went up the top of the hill and jumped off the hill. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that, does it? No, so that was two types of flying in one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I think a float flew remote mm-hmm. control plane as, as well. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a perfect day, you know. Yeah, a yeah. good feed and a nice woman and you're done. <laughs> yeah, Barbie. Barbie. Ah, cool as. Just to, for the for the for the dumb guys. So, how much would a plane like this be worth on the on on oh, market? Look, if you go to an engineer or a restorer, they usually tell you about one hundred and seventy-five thousand for this one. Yeah. Roughly. Okay. And the other one? The other ones. Look, when we got that restored six seven years ago, it's about one hundred and thirty thousand. Okay. Uh, heard of a person just recently restoring, and he was still counting at one hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, sound. Actually, it's not too bad, you know, for a plane. Yeah. Like you know, this... that one ended up being. Yeah, a little over 400. 400,000. <laughs> that's what I was thinking of. Thinking like, that's not too bad for a plane. That's what I said. They, they, they tell you 175. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's insured for more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was surprising because like, I know what planes are worth. But I'd never get it back. It's only insured for a quarter of a mil. So. Yeah, you never get it back. But it's not about money, is no. it? Is it about passion? No, 
Oh, this one is about finishing dad's mm -hmm. unfinished projects. So. Mm -hmm. no, I'm sure you're very proud of it because it's yeah. immaculate. It is, it is. We won grand champion at the Antique Aeroplane Association's annual meet. Okay. In Chuka, so that was the, uh, the main prize. Huh? Mm. Cool. That one won best biplane in 2004 at Caboolture at the same. same okay. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Some of the other planes around here, there's a Harvard behind us that's uh, North American, it's built in Canada and uh, 600 horsepower engine. Is that a replica or original? Original. Okay. Yep. The paint scheme is actually quite famous and I don't know a lot about it but it's um, an old Vietnam paint scheme. Okay. The guy used to basically hook up rockets and all sorts of stuff and, and go flying when the boys were coming home and try and pick off all the enemy. Oh really? Yeah. On this plane? Yep. <laughs> yep, and he got uh, got shot down once and survived and got a medal, mm -hmm. got slapped over the wrist and told not to do it again. Mm -hmm. So of course he did it again yeah. and got shot down and yeah, well, he wasn't allowed to fly after that. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's a bird dog, a Cessna bird dog, which is famous throughout Vietnam also. Okay. For um, close ground support.